Hello everyone, it's day five of me trying a Raspberry Pi as a desktop computer and this time we're trying Ubuntu Mate. To get this installed was a bit uh, unconventional because Ubuntu Mate 2004 has not been officially released yet but Ubuntu Server 2004 has been released. This is for the Raspberry Pi 4 in particular. So I had to write the Ubuntu Server image to a micro SD card and then install the Ubuntu Mate desktop. So sudo apps install Ubuntu Mate, which has installed most of it with the exception of the welcome screen, which we did install via the snap packages because this is a snap package. Yeah, that did give us a chance to try out a couple of snaps which we haven't done yet. Chromium and Ubuntu Mate welcome screen and they seem to work perfectly well. Sorry to have to interrupt the video at this point, but I've been made aware of a better way of installing Ubuntu Mate into Ubuntu Server with a program called Desktopify. So this has been developed by Martin Wimpress, who is the project manager for Ubuntu Mate, and it's a script that provides you a choice of installing any of the Ubuntu derivative desktop environments onto Ubuntu Server, and it makes all necessary customizations for a Raspberry Pi. Now I've tried this out with Kubuntu, but unfortunately it was too late for me to try with Ubuntu Mate but I thought I would mention it in this video. Now it won't be much longer until the formal release of Ubuntu Mate for the Raspberry Pi 4. So initial thoughts on this so far? I think it's definitely a lot more responsive than the first two operating systems I tried out. You can actually use multiple programs at once and there isn't an issue with this. So if I just were to open up a couple of different things, I suppose, so as you can see, everything's quite responsive. Even with the recording, that is. Even with the recording. Which does yes. lag things quite badly. Yeah. I should say that's the first time I've opened LibreOffice Writer. A oh. little bit slower, but not too bad in the grand scheme of things. I bet if you were to open it again, it would be quicker. Yeah. That <laughs> caching. Mm. Yeah. So it is lagging, but um, yeah, it, it, it's... Um, it's got there. I don't think it's as bad as Manjaro KDE at this point. Mm. It's a lot more responsive. It's not as pretty. No. But you do get more choice on the desktop layouts you want to choose from. And theming. Yes, as you can see, I've already had a bit of a play around with the theming. So I have, cho I have chosen uh, to have the pink theme. Uh, so I've, I installed that and I've just gone with the um, regular ambient variant uh, for this and uh, yeah upon changing this uh, quids had to make me change the uh, desktop background because it was quite bright and pink and so I've changed it to this um, out of focus light um, wallpaper instead. The audio issues persisted again in that we wanted to try and get the sound output down the headphone jack so if you select the output it just says stereo but it defaults to HDMI so you had to use a terminal command, and if I'm looking at this correctly, we've had to use the terminal command twice now. Mm. Once on, once yesterday, and then once today. So, come on, Marty developers, sort this out so it can be a permanent selection through the desktop. There's your challenge, the KDE developers have done it. So just like before, I have tested out running Big Buck Bunny on YouTube, and um, it's basically the same as in Manjaro in that it can only handle up to 720. After that, it um, drops far too many um, frames. But um, I mean, trying to play video now uh, will be a bit of an unfair test because I'm recording at the same time and it is it does lag a little bit while I'm doing that. But playing a downloaded file, no problems with, with VLC, where it goes up to 1080, perfectly fine. But in your use case, there's more web videos, YouTube, yeah. so that's what we're looking against. Mm. Navigation of websites, uh, basic websites seem to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, every, everything loads quite fast, no issues there. The amount of memory use seems to be a little bit higher now, and that's actually good to see that Ubuntu Mate is actually now caching more into the RAM. We've got 8 gig available, and it's used over a gig of RAM, which the older Pies wouldn't have even had. So we can now start to see some benefit here of having the 8 gig of RAM on the Raspberry Pi. I don't think even Manjaro or Raspberry Pi OS have been using the memory so much. They've not been caching enough here. 
it's good to see. So looking at the applications that are available, there is a wider selection of programs, uh, less of a focus on education than Raspberry OS, which is understandable, but it's more aimed at the average user. But I will say that I did have to install a few games um, and yeah, that process was nice and straightforward through using the software boutique. And uh, yeah, that was quite nice to use. Yeah, so using the software boutique was very straightforward um, in order to install the games. I'm going to select games and yeah, I've downloaded desktop games. Uh, so yeah, you just select whatever you want. And then there was a nice little tooltip telling me to go to the bulk queue. So it's kind of like you've selected what you want and then you're going to check out essentially um, as if you're using an online shop or something. Uh, so yeah, that was straightforward and easy to do. This is only a cut down software center. I've done the full review of Ubuntu Mate, but it's, yeah, it's a nice basic uh, software center for anyone new to the desktop, which I think was what you needed. Mm -hmm. So concluding thoughts for today are that Ubuntu Mate on the Raspberry Pi um, has much better performance than I've seen on Raspberry OS or Manjaro. Um, the only downside that I have seen at the moment is in getting the audio working. So if that were fixed, then that would be almost, an almost perfect kind of operating system to work with uh, for this system. Another downside was that we couldn't get the webcam working again. We did try to do that while doing a recording. Interestingly, they did work separately quite fine, but mm. when trying to include the webcam uh, stream while doing the recording, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't play nice. Mm. So we had to go without that again uh, for today. But yeah, apart from those couple of things, uh, good experience with, with this so far. One final thing to mention, I did have to install this system from scratch. So actually installing the programs, I think there was like about a thousand or so packages that were required. That didn't take that long to build up. Mm. I think that was done within about 10 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes. But comparing that to Manjaro's doing the updates of, I, mean, I think it was a few hundred there, that took significantly longer. Mm. So yeah, it's definite, um, performance difference here. I think doing one thing at a time it almost feels like a normal computer. Mm. Trying to multitask those, that's where it starts to fall down a bit. I wouldn't say yeah. so. Well, I do, think yeah. it's multitasking okay. Or better. Multitasking is better but perhaps not as perfect as... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a full-blown desktop. Yeah. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later. Bye.